Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and it looks like the battle over the Kerbal Space Program budget has reached new highs or lows, depending upon who you're talking to. So, uh, after exhausting their supply of cheap used capsules, which weren't very good, the rocket scientists have actually decided to forget about the capsules altogether and build a lander, which is nothing more than a few RCS tanks, with uh, ladders and hard points, which they borrowed from the the, the space plane program, uh, some rockets, some um, RCS thrusters, and of course mechanical jeb to power the whole thing. Now, uh, yes, there is no capsule. The only thing the capsule really added was a bunch of mass and the ability for the pilots to refuel their EVA suits. If you're just landing and walking around, then this is a smaller, lighter, and of course, cheaper way to do it. So what we're doing is uh, maneuvering our astronauts around it to hook themselves onto a ladder. We have to get all three of them on because otherwise it will have an asymmetric load. And that will make landing a whole lot harder. So I'm just switching this to radial view to make sure that they all end up getting on their ladders vertically. That uh, kind of embarrassing if you end up going into the moon head first. You look weird. So just um, take this guy out. It looks like a little easier to get on. We're zipping across the day side of the moon. And, uh, hope that I don't run out of time because you can't time accelerate when you've got these guys in the ladders. Let's get the third guy out. He's some no-name pilot. We're <laughs> still wondering whatever happened to Jab and friends. Looks like they're being held up in more hearings about that so-called accident. They're still rebuilding the, the house as well and picking through the wreckage. Some people are even saying that the administrator deserved it. Who'd have thought it? So that's us. We've got all three on board. And now to decouple. Oh, well, oops. Um, yeah, so we have a um, we have mechanical jeb attached, but because there's a capsule, now we also need a capsule to control. We need a pilot in the capsule. So <laughs> one of you guys got to get back off and uh, go inside. Which one's it going to be? The one nearest would ide be ideal. Uh, let's go. Oh, okay. Well, apparently I'm retarded and I picked the one furthest away. Well, he'd probably use the most fuel to get there. There, grab on, get in. And a smart ASS is, fi is firing off again. Let's see where we are. Oh yeah, we're about halfway through the daylight. Oh, not even. We're about one third of the way through the daylight side. So... We have plenty of time to get these guys sorted out for our landing. <coughs> We're orbiting around 10 kilometers up. Okay, now we need to get him and out of the capsule and get him hooked on to this lander again. Being careful not to bump it too much or, send to, or I might send it spinning, which uh, would, of course, be somewhat complicated. There he goes. He's taking up... Trying to get to his his designated position on this lander. It's important that they all work together here. If one of them falls off, it will be unbalanced. And um, that will not make it easy to land by any means, especially with no torque from anything but the RCS system. RCS system. Uh, the S in that is for systems. So the RCS. Ah, dear. It's like people that say ATM machine. Oh, well, um, looks like he's going to be hanging on upside down. You would have to be different. Okay, so let's switch control. Um, nope, where's my... That's not the one. Yeah, nope. Ah, there we go. Now, we are ready to start our landing. Oh, crap. Um, shoot. Uh, the autopilot's going nuts. Oh. Okay, um, because of the positions of the pilots, the autopilot went and pushed them off in all sorts of weird directions. Thankfully, I caught that early on and I did not burn it any more than a sliver of fuel on these wasted maneuvers. 
get myself lined up and uh, ready to start holding down that H key so I can thrust myself out of orbit and then uh, land on the surface 10 kilometers up. It's really, if you're going to do this, you have to be in a low orbit because there's no time acceleration. It, I, I The first time I tried this, I was in like a 200 kilometer orbit. And so I set my iPhone to do basically, they have the alarm go off when I reached Peri, Peri Moon. <laughs> and then it turned out that I was stuck on the phone at the time. And so they crashed into the surface well before that. <coughs> so, um... Yeah, I've dropped our speed down by about 140. This uh, thing handles pretty darn well. You can see that the fuel is running down a lot more slowly, at least in terms of the Delta V that I'm getting from it, because we're not burning any of it off with the Smart ASS. Down, we've now lost 200 meters per second, and we've used about 40% of a tank, so we should get ourselves to about zero velocity with one tank. Landing will probably take a little more, but it also means that we just need a single tank to get back into orbit in under ideal circumstances, although it'd be nice to have a bit of a buffer. We're now down to 275. That is half our orbital velocity. Our periaps, in theory, is deep inside the planet, or in deep inside the moon. Orbital velocity is dropping, and these guys are... um. Well, they're hanging on for dear life, but uh, it's good that we've given them something to stand on. Yeah, those are small struts. They are borrowed from the plane design uh, components. Be nice if there was some way to give them a, a, um, a step all the way around, something that weighed less. But uh, I think this design is working pretty well, actually. Now down to 150 meters per second, and we are still on our first tank. I reckon that we're going to maybe, we're, we're definitely going to use maybe one and a half tanks to total for the landing, which will give us a huge return budget. Heading downwards at quite a, a fast speed now. Our vertical speed is minus 80, almost 80 meters per second. Our horizontal speed is a lot lower, 86. So yeah, you can see from the surface information that we're now that's now our vertical speed is faster than our horizontal. We are coming down. And we are coming down fast. So just want to make sure that I don't overdo it. 1.5 kilometers and I am still going fast. I hope I have enough um I hope I haven't left this too late. That would be rather unfortunate. One kilometer and 50 meters per second. No, 60 meters per second. I'm starting to see surface features here. Um, if I could get more thrust, I would really like it now. But <laughs> I hope that I don't run out. Picking up those rocks. Less than 200 meters to go and going at 20 meters per second. 18, 15, 16, 14, 13, 12, 10. Okay, now we are safe and we're at 50 meters. I, I think I judged this just right. If I had left this any longer, I would have been crashing into the surface at quite a speed. Thankfully, the astronauts are pretty robust, but it would be unfortunate if I had to do another rescue. There we go. And I remembered to go into the registry after. Thanks for everyone that told me. I think the shadows make all the difference. Having that shadow really makes it a whole lot easier to figure out what we're doing. <coughs> so yeah, one step for a Kerbal. One giant leap for Kerbal kind. It is like a flying fuel tank, this thing. With nothing else. It's really kind of cool that you can fly this without the capsule attached. He's really excited. Look at that. Look, I've never been on the moon before. Oh. So now, uh, yeah, working on the assumption, that only took seven minutes. So, you know, four-hour endurance. Let's see if I can, well, I'll try to get them back to their vehicle in the time that they have before their oxygen runs out. But we have an orbit to do um, some interesting geology and science except that they've just realized that they left their geology tools in the capsule. 
I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.